ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಜಯ ದ್ವೈತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಜಯ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವಿಂಧ ಜಯ ದ್ವೈತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಜಯ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವಿಂಧ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಜಯ ಜಯ ದ್ವೈತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಜಯ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವಿಂದ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಜಯ ದ್ವೈತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವಿಂದ ಹರಿ ಭೋ ಹರಿ ಭೋ ಹರಿ ಭೋ ಹರಿ ಭೋ ಹರಿ ಜಾಯ ಪಂಚ 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 ಧ್ಯಾನ ಪಂಚ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಜಾಯ ಗೌರಾನಿತ 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 ಜಾಯ ಗೌರಾನಿತ ಪ್ರಭು 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 ಪ್ಯಾಯ ಜಾಯ ಪ್ರಭು 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 ಜಾಯ ಜಾಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪೀಲ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾಕಿ ಸೋ ಡೂ ದ ವರ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ the 8th chapter of uh madhya uh yeah 8th chapter of this is ari leela and verse number 33 if you want to put it up on the board 833 ora mundalo kasuna chaitanya mangala not there yet okay <laughs> so we do it out we'll do it out and you can all follow me i'll do it real slow <laughs> ore muda lokasuna 
Chaitanya Mangala Chaitanya Mahima Yate Jani Besakala Ora Muda Lokasuna Chaitanya Mangala Chaitanya Mahima Yate Jani Be Sakala Ora Muda Lokasuna Chaitanya Mangala Chaitanya Mahima Yate Jani Be Sakala Of all of you, Muda, foolish, Loka, people, Suna, just here, Chaitanya Mangala. The book of this name, Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya's Mahima, glories, Yate. In which, Jani Bay, you will know, Sakala, all. Translation, so uh, tomorrow is the um, appearance or disappearances? Appearance day of Lochan Das Thakur. I think his disappearance comes up in a few days also. So this, I found this much about him. Translation, and this, who's speaking? I think it's Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is saying, O oh, fools, ha ha ha, just read Sri Chaitanya Mangala. By reading this book, you can understand all the glories of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Please repeat, O oh, fools, just read Sri Chaitanya Mangala. By reading this book, you can understand all the glories of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Sri Vindavan Das Thakur Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat was originally entitled Sri Chaitanya Mangala. But when Lochan, Sri Loch, Srila Lochan Das Thakur later wrote another book named Sri Chaitanya Mangala, Srila Rindavan Das Thakur changed the name of his book, which is now therefore known as Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. The life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very elaborately described in Chaitanya Bhagavat. 
and Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami has already informed us that this that his Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita has never ha, he start again. Uh, Ma, uh, let's see. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami has informed us that in his Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita he has described whatever Vrindavan Das Thakur has not mentioned. This acceptance of Sri Chaitanya Bhagwat, like Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, indicates his acceptance of the disciplic succession. A writer of transcendental literature never tries to surpass the previous acharyas. Hmm. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurvena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Dev Hey Ho Ravani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakalpa Taru Vishya Kripa Sindhu Bhavana Bhatita Nam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Aita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mm. So we know from our own experience that there are three main, two, but three actually, main treatises, descriptions of the life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Um, one is called Chaitanya Bhagavan, authored by Vrindavan Das Thakur which is quite an elaborate uh, book, has many, many verses, thousands of verses. And it describes in somewhat detail many of the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami later wrote Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. And um, he very carefully tries not to surpass Vrindavan Das Thakur by mentioning the same things he mentioned, but he does to a small degree, and the things that uh, Rindavan Das Thakur didn't mention, he mentions it in an elaborate discussion. So having sensitivity and following the etiquette that one tries not to outdo the previous acharyas by trying to do something better, just like we have the example when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was here, there was one great a proponent of Krishna consciousness named Balabhacharya, Sri Balabhacharya. He later established a sampradaya called the Pushti Mark, which are still active in Vrindavan. Um, he had come to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and uh, he had written a commentary on uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. That commentary is still available. In fact, I have a copy of it. And uh, he, when he spoke to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu introducing his writings, he said, I have uh, sur surpassed the uh, Sridhar Swami's commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam. Lord Chaitanya didn't like that at all. He immediately smashed him. <laughs> he says, anyone who doesn't accept the... Uh, a wife who doesn't accept the husband is a prostitute. <laughs> and then he went on to explain, and he says that, you know, Sri Sridhar Swami is the original author of Srimad Bhagavatam in terms of commentary. And uh, we, we accept Sridhar Swami's uh, commentary as the foundation for all other commentaries which follow. And therefore he told him, 
Uh, one who doesn't accept the wife, the, the wife doesn't accept the husband, she becomes a prostitute. So he called him a prostitute. <laughs> Instead of glorifying his work and saying, oh, you did nice work. And he did. He did amazing work. And, and those commentaries are really deep. In, but he presented himself as being better than the previous acharyas. Therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't want to hear anything like that. And then, of course, uh, Vallabhachari tried in so many ways to somehow impress Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with his scholarship. So he had this pride. Although he was very intelligent and very devotional, he had developed this pride and Mahaprabhu came to destroy pride. And that's why he said, Trinata peace and Ichena Tayori Vasa Hishnuna Hamani Namamani Dena Kirtana Kirtaniya Sadarahi, which was his main teaching. And we say that it was his main teaching. He taught humility, tolerance, pridelessness, and respect for others as the principle for the execution of devotional service by following those principles. One cut Kirtaniya Sadarahi, that means one can chant the holy names of the Lord always. <laughs> And, and so Mahaprabhu used to hear, because, you know, Sri ba, uh, Balabhacharya really liked Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Lord Chaitanya also liked him. But he saw this really strong pride in him. So another time he came to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and said, um, I have compiled a list of all the names of Lord Sri Krishna. And he wanted to read them. I have compiled a list of all of the names of Lord Chaitanya, uh, I mean of Lord Krishna. And uh, Lord Chaitanya immediately said, I only know two names, <laughs> Yasomati Nandana and Shamsundar. That's all I know. <laughs> this, the beautiful, blissful son of, uh, of Sachi Devi, or I mean of um, Yasoda Devi, and Shamsundar, one who was... All his limbs are golden, uh, golden, beautiful. I'm um, blackish. I'm sorry. So, Mahaprabhu, you know, smashed him again. And then another time, he also came for a third time. And uh, he, what, what else did he say? There was another thing, and Lord Chaitanya uh, also put him down. Everything. Vallabhacharya did was really in line with devotional activities, but he was proud. And because of that pride, Lord Chaitanya kept smashing him. And then he went to the devotees to try to get their attention for the work that he had done, and uh, they wouldn't listen to him. There's this cold air coming out of here again, so, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to have to get into my snowsuit here. Thank you. I guess that'll do it, hopefully. And he kept going to the devotees, trying to get their attention to read what he had authored, but they wouldn't look, because they know Mahaprabhu wasn't pleased with him. But then he came to Gadadhar, and Gadadhar has a, uh, has a nature where he's very gentle and submissive. And so Balabhachari came to Gadadhar and then went right up to him and started talking to him real fast. <laughs> so Gadadhar couldn't get away. And uh, Gadadhar was thinking, oh no, Mahaprabhu doesn't like us listening to whatever he says, but what am I going to do? He's such a great personality, and now he's talking to me. And what am I? So Gadadhar was in, started to pray to Lord Chaitanya in his heart that I don't want to listen to him, but I don't want to offend him by running away. <laughs> so, and then later on, uh, Subdhamadhar Goswami chastised Gadadhar for listening to him. 
But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knew the heart of Gadadhar, so he didn't he he didn't say anything. <laughs> So this idea of surpassing the previous acharya, I remember when I was in Croatia, one the person wanted to become my disciple, and he wanted he had wanted to write a book. I said, "What is your qualifications for writing a book?" He wanted to write a book on uh, on reincarnation. I said. Uh, you know, we got so many books on reincarnation. Just study those. <laughs> you don't need to write a book. Yeah, no, no, I'm going to write a book. <laughs> I said, you know. And then he wrote it, and I wouldn't read it. <laughs> I don't know who else decided to read it, but I didn't read it. And after a, after a while, he thought, this guru is not my guru, because he doesn't do what I say. <laughs> <laughs> So that was the end of that. <laughs> I was so happy he left. <laughs> so you get that, you know, like people want to become famous by writing and present themselves as knowledgeable in Shastra. But one has to get blessings and permission from the previous acharyas in order to, to actually write transcendental literature, transcendental knowledge. One cannot just surreptitiously or what we say, whimsically write, Jai Sri, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai. Beautiful, huh? Today was the dressing. Mm. Um, yeah, so we have three books. And, and of course, Vrindavan Das Thakur is the father. And when Lochan Das came before Vrindavan Das Thakur, no, actually, yeah, he came before him, but at the same time, he wrote a book and he gave it the same name as, uh, as Vrindavan Das Thakur's book, because Vrindavan Das Thakur's book was known as Sri Chaitanya Mangala also. So there was two books both on the life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with the same name. So Vrindavan Das Thakur changed his to Chaitanya Bhagavan. Sri Ch uh, Srila Prabhupada, in establishing the Krishna Consciousness Movement, accepted um, Chaitanya Charitamrita as the foundation for our knowledge of Krishna Consciousness coming from Lord Chaitanya's teachings and his past activities. Why? Mm, there's some speculation on that. And then two, there's two things. One is that Lord uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami puts a lot of emphasis on Lord Chaitanya, whereas uh, Vrindavan Das Thakur puts a lot of emphasis on Lord Nityananda. Because he, he is actually a disciple of Lord Nityananda, and you'll find full chapters on Lord Nityananda in Chaitanya Bhagavat. You won't find that in Chaitanya Charitamrita. But another one, and I think it's, which, it's a more prominent reason, is in Chaitanya Charitamrita there are innumerable references to scriptures to support whatever he says. He gives a lot of, especially Srimad Bhagavatam, he gives a lot of Shastric references, which gives, and that Prabhupada wanted to really solidify our knowledge by giving us this knowledge with very careful support from other others Shastras, so we would have a clear understanding of the Tattva. And the thing is, in Chaitanya Bhagwa uh, by Vrindavan Das Thakur, it's mostly Leela. <laughs> It's mostly Leela. And if you read Leela without reading Tattva or having an understanding of Tattva, you may also see Leela in somewhat of an a imaginary way or you can't connect it to anything more deeper in terms of the philosophy. Because all the Leelas that are played out are actually expressions of the Tattva. The leelas are not contrary to the tattva, but if you don't know the tattva, then the leelas, you know, may just be nice stories, that's all. 
So uh, Chaitanya Chari Tamrita by Krishna Das Kaviraj was was the one chosen by Srila Prabhupada. And there's a third, there's another reason. <laughs> and I think maybe this is the, the main reason. I just remembered this reason. Uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur did a commentary on Chaitanya Bhagwat. So Srila Prabhupada didn't want to try to surpass his guru by doing a, the commentary on the same treatise. I think this is the answer for the whole thing. Yeah, if you read, there's about eight volumes, maybe nine, eight or nine volumes by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati with elaborate commentaries on Chaitanya Bhagwat. And it's beautiful, really. Chaitanya Bhagwat is so sweet, it's just so deep in leelas. And if you want to get the tattva, you can read Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's books. There it goes very deep into the tattva. And just like there is a mention of um, Krishna's disappearance for the, from the planet, what well, is the, the, called the Mausalya Leela, when the, all of the family members and uh, what we say, yeah, family members of Krishna, Krishna had established, he had 16,108 queens, and each one he had ten sons. You can imagine how much that is. <laughs> and each of the ten sons had ten sons. <laughs> and of course he had one daughter too. Each of the one queens had one daughter and ten sons. And so there was a large family member, plus the demigods also had come to earth to assist Krishna in his pastimes. So many of them were devas. So at the end, that particular leela was when uh, Krishna wanted to wind up that powerful entourage of his descendants who now had become so powerful that they had become proud. We were all family members of Krishna. And so Krishna arranged through his uh, leela shakti uh, Krishna has a shakti called lila shakti. Well, he he can make things happen automatically through that energy. And uh, and so he arranged for them to get intoxicated by rice wine, fermented rice turned into a liquor and then drunk. And Prabhupada said they make that in India. You want to know how to do it? <laughs> okay. You take, you take rice and you cook it and then you put it underneath water for at least 30 days. And you drain the water out and then you're almost there. <laughs> I'm not sure of the rest of the process, but then you add a few other, a few other ingredients and you got rice wine. Don't try it. <laughs> So they were drinking that and they got intoxicated and then they started arguing amongst themselves and then they, when they were arguing they started to fight and when they fight they killed each other. And Krishna arranged for them to go back to their heavenly realms and to the other realms that where they came from so by arranging this battle between them. And then that's how they, and Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati and Chaitanya Bhagwa gives a 20-page commentary, 20 pages on that particular leela. You've got to read it to really, you can go really deep into that leela. It's just, there's so much to it that, because Srimad Bhagavatam, although it's the essence of spiritual knowledge, a lot of the pastimes, it doesn't go into the details. It gets to the essence. So what happened before and what happened after of a particular leela is not mentioned in Bhagavatam. Just like, I'll give you an example. We know about in the fourth canto, you have King Vena. King Vena was this really, I mean he was, uh, he was, this, he was the father of King Prithu, but he was, uh, he was a king who actually was a Dakoite. And he was ruling the world. And 
he grew up in a very I mean he was a he was an angry person his whole life. He used to play with his friends and kill them. <laughs> that would be their games. And so he grew up and he be, because he was heir to the throne, his father, King Agnidra, got disgusted with his son and just left. <laughs> You have a son that's just so bad you can you don't want to stay at home. <laughs> Somebody was just telling me just the other day, not the other day, maybe it was a couple of weeks ago, they had a son like that. <laughs> I won't mention any names. But the kid is just, you know, terror. <laughs> he chastises his mother and he fights with everybody. Nobody, he, huh? Huh? The king, King Vena, yeah, but this, I'm just talking about this boy that I found out. I'm not going to tell you any details because you don't want to embarrass the family. But the kid's 10 years old and he's just like, hell. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, when you get a son like that, you think, what's the use of staying at home? <laughs> I'll leave for the forest. <laughs> Good luck. I, you know, she was asking me what to do with him. I said, throw him out of the house. <laughs> and then he has no place to go. He told his mother, if you throw me out of the house, I'll, I'll just give me my bead back and I'll go. <laughs> so he likes to chant. He must be an incarnation of Rudra or something. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's another story. But uh, this King Vena was so bad that the, uh, the Brahmins chanted mantras and killed him. By the power of mantra, if you know how to chant mantras, you can do anything. Because mantras are powerful, they're more powerful than weapons. They are weapons. There's things called Shastra and Shastra. Shastra and Shastra. Shastra is weapon. And so in the Shastra, there are mantras that are used for weapons, just like they used to throw the Brahmastra weapon. And how did they, did they enact that weapon and even counteract it was done by mantras. There wasn't any artillery around. They just chanted mantras perfectly and that accessed the, mo the uh, weapon. And the weapon could go anywhere the person who chanted the mantras directed it. That's how powerful. Mantras are very powerful. That's why when you chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, you should know you're chanting the most powerful mantra. It's so powerful. So if we can perfect our chanting, you know, you become, if you, I don't know if you want to become powerful, but you do <laughs> automatically by chanting Hare Krishna. It is so powerful because it's Krishna himself. Well, that mantra, <clears throat> so mantras are there so they killed him simply by chanting mantras and then later on, of course. Then what happened to King Vena? You don't hear anything else. But then you go to Korma Purana and you find that King Vena, yeah, after being killed, he takes rebirth in Kurukshetra. And he lives in Kurukshetra and he follows all the rules and regulations to get purified. And after getting purified, he actually ascends to the heavenly realms. <laughs> so King Vena had a nice destination in his next life. You don't find it in Bhagavatam, it's in Kurma Purana. So the Puranas sometimes give beginning and ends to the different stories that are in the Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam is also Purana, it's called Bhagavad Purana. So you'll find more and more information like that. So we should study these books here, just like it says, what is the Krishna Das Kaviraj saying? Oh fools, he's talking to us. Just read Sri Chaitanya Mangala. By reading this book, you can understand all the glories of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he's referring to, I believe he's referring to uh, Chaitanya Bhagavat now, but it was originally done as Chaitanya Mangala. But the book Chaitanya Mangala, done by Lochan Tas Dakor, also has many, many wonderful pastimes in there. And there's one pastime 
And this is, I mean, ladies like this particular pastime. It's the, it's the lady pastime. And men, men too. I like it. I read it. I thought it was great. It's Lord Chaitanya's marriage to Vishnu Priya. And it goes on for pages and pages and pages and pages. You know, those of you who want to get married, read that one. You'll get the blessings of getting married. Hare Krishna. Nobody raises their hand, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, in that, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful description of Lord Chaitanya's marriage to Vishnu Priya. It's so sweet and so extensive with great details of what happened in the whole ceremony. It's so nice. You don't find that in Chaitanya Charitamrita or in Chaitanya Bhagavan. So each of these scriptures have you... In it have a unique pastime which is outstanding. In Chaitanya Bhagavat, what's outstanding is Lord Chaitanya's march on the Kasi's house. 745 verses for that pastime. When Lord Chaitanya, when the, the drums were broken by the Kasi and the Kasi then went back to his house and then Lord Chaitanya found out and organized Harinam Sankirtan and millions of people came from all over the universe to join the Harinam, and they marched on the house of Chan Kazi. That's 745 verses in that one. That's a beautiful, beautiful description of how the power of Harinam, that's why when we do Harinam, hey, it's powerful. <laughs> when all the devotees are together chanting and dancing in public, poof, the whole atmosphere becomes changed, and people actually become changed. And if we check, if we chant purely, that means without any offense, you know, you just people will be running out of the out of their stores and dancing with you. <laughs> that happened when we were doing this uh, tour in Croatia. We do it every summer during the uh, August time. We go out for two weeks and we do all these. Harinam Sankirtan all over. What is it called? Austria? Not Austria? Aus Austria? What is that place in Croatia? Istria. East, East, Istria. Istria, yeah. Istria. So we go there every year for two weeks and we do Harinam. And people come out and out of the shops and start dancing with us. <laughs> it's really nice. <clears throat> So yeah, Parinam Sankirtan is so powerful, I like that. A little bit on the life of Lochan Das Thakur. We don't know so much about his life because it's not so much written. But he was a disciple of uh, Narahari Sakar. And you know that we sing every night. Nara Hari Hari Kori Chamara Dulaiham Sanjaina Mukunda Vasu Goshari Ghaya. So Nara Hari is mentioned with Chamara. He, he is fanning Lord Chaitanya with the Chamara. And he has a special position in relation to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is very rare. Lord Chaitanya reveals to him he is actually the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And uh, Narahari actually understands that and worships the Lord in that mood. Lord Chaitanya didn't give that knowledge to, in general. Of course, he did it when he did it when the Mahaprakash Leela, when he uh, appeared as the Supreme Lord for 21 hours and accepted worship. But generally, he would always block his ears or even respond in a very unhappy way anyone who referred to him as the Supreme Lord. Why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did that? He did that in order to establish that the living entity in the material world is not God. Because <laughs> many people, and it still happens today, People get a little powerful in spiritual life and they think, well, I'm an incarnation. I just found out. <laughs> My wife told me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I can, I can, mystic power. 
I remember we were in New Vrindavan and this one yogi came to us. It was in the middle of winter, 1983, I remember. It was the coldest winter in the history of America, I think. It was like 40, minus 40 below zero Fahrenheit, not centigrade. <laughs> minus 40, because zero centigrade and 32 degrees Fahrenheit are the same. So when you get to 32 degrees Fahrenheit, you're at zero degrees centigrade. This was minus 40 Fahrenheit. It was cold. I remember we did Sankirtan, and we were trying to do Sankirtan in minus 40 degrees. It was so cold. I, we were with six devotees. We were in a van, and we all had to get out, and we were thinking, should we get out? <laughs> it's like we're going to turn into snow icicles and so. So some of us got out, and I got out, <laughs> and one a couple of devotees said, "Good luck." <laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> it was so cold. My hand got so cold it was completely ice. It was froze up. I couldn't even move it because <laughs> you had to, you know, when you do sankirtan, you have to handle money. And you can't have gloves on. <laughs> it's like hard. <laughs> but Krishna gave me a little mercy. Um, he helped me. I got warm automatically by his mercy. But uh, where was I going with this story? <laughs> okay. Oh, this yogi. Yeah, he came during that time. It was really cold. And he came to our community and he was just presenting himself as being, you know, this powerful yogi. And he wanted to demonstrate to the devotees in New Vrindavi his yogic powers. So we weren't interested. <laughs> but he was persistent. So finally the community leader said, all right, go ahead. You can come to my house. And there was a, when it was about a group of about 10 of us. And I, was, I was also there. And, uh, and so the yogi came and he was going to demonstrate his yogic powers. <laughs> so he, we do construction there. He took this big piece of rebar, you know, for using for constructions, really heavy metal things. And he just went, <laughs> he bent it like it was, you know, spaghetti. And then one devotee said, and he, he, had his, he had his wife there, the yogi had a wife. And he was always looking at her too. And so, so one devotee made a nice comment. He said, after he bent that, he she said, yeah, that's what his wife does to him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then he took a, a light bulb and he went, uh, light bulb, you know, when it needs, and he just powdered it by going like this, turned it into powder, and so, who cares? <laughs> and then he said he asked the devotees come and check his pulse, so he stopped his pulse. There was no heartbeat. <laughs> so. We weren't so impressed. We were waiting for we. We decided just to give him a chance to do his thing. So you know, so because he was a guest, and after he was so persistent, he wanted to make a demonstration. But we weren't interested. So he was doing all his things, and then he had the power where you, if somebody sat in a car and turned on the engine and hit the gas, he could hold the car back from moving. <laughs> He's done it. He did it before. So he wanted to demonstrate it to us too. So we went outside, <laughs> and he grabbed onto the bumper. But the thing is, it was a cold winter, and there was ice on the ground. <laughs> so he failed. <laughs> Kept slipping on the ice. <laughs> so that was the end of the yogic demonstration. <laughs> We just thought we'd take a break for a little comedy hour. So, <laughs> so yeah, these so these yogis, you know, they think you know, you know, so so Lord Chaitanya, you know, he didn't want 
anyone to think that he was the Supreme. But Narhari Sarkar had that special feature that he could actually refer to the Lord in private as the Supreme Lord. And Lord Chaitanya didn't object to that. Now, Narhari Sarkar's disciple was Lochan Das Thakur. And Lochan Das Thakur was was training underneath Har uh, Narahari Sakar for many years. In fact, Narahari Sakar had his own ashram and he would train devotees in Krishna consciousness, brahmacharis. So, after some time, one uh, person came to Narahari Sakar and said, You know, that disciple of your Lochan, he's married. What is he doing in your ashram? Narahari didn't even know it. So he came to Lochan. He said, you're married? And Lochan got embarrassed because he ran away from his, um, his Grihastha situation to join him in the ashram. And uh, yeah, so uh, he said, yes, yes, Guru Maharaj. And your, your wife is still there in the village. Yes. How long was the last time you seen her? Ten years ago. <laughs> oh. Well, you should go back because you're married legally and you shouldn't be here try, training up to be brahmachari. You should go back and be a nice grihasta and practice Krishna consciousness. That was the order of his spiritual master. So, Lachan, he didn't like the idea, but it was his guru's order, so he did. He went back to his village. So he's walking around the village, trying to find a house where his wife was living. And he goes, and he's looking around, and he sees this lady drawing water from the well. And then he asks about the house, and she realizes that's her husband, but he doesn't recognize her. <laughs> Somehow he became too much of a brahmachari. <laughs> and he doesn't even recognize her. So then he, she says to him, Don't you recognize me? He says, What? I'm your wife. Oh! <laughs> so they met at the well. <laughs> he didn't, fall, I guess he, he got out of the well and now he's falling back into the well again. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so he, he, yeah. So he's now he's back with his wife. And so, so he decides, all right, it's the order, of my guru. I have to live with my wife. <laughs> so, you know, he uh, decided that. Well, what is married life without Krishna consciousness? So, the only activity he really would perform with his wife was they would sit together in the evening and read together about the pastimes of the Lord. And so he would sit there and she would read or he would read and then they would just talk about, you know. After a while his wife thought, this is not really a, a good idea. <laughs> she wasn't happy. And after some time he thought, I think I'll go back to the ashram <laughs> and try to p persuade my Guru Maharaj to take me back. <laughs> So he stayed for a year with his wife, but then she could, she actually, you know, actually, yeah, now I remember, she said to him, go back, <laughs> you're not, you're not, you're not meant for married life, <laughs> go back. <laughs> She's told him, yeah, you, this is, you know, she could see that he wasn't interested in her. And so she sent him back and he went back and Narahari Sakur took him back, so. That was Lochan Das Thakur. That's the only pastime I know of Lochan. Of course, he, he wrote this great treatise of the Chaitanya Mangala. That came afterwards, which is really a beautiful book on the life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And there are many, uh, there's, one, there's many pastimes we could speak about, but it's a little bit past the hour here. So we'll stop and uh, uh, see if there's any comments or questions. Yes, um, Radhagovinda. Uh, 
Uh, he composed Chaitanya Mangala uh, just outside his village of Shrikhanda. Yeah, Shrikhanda, right. And 20 minutes walk from the village is a forest of the banyan trees where he, and there he composed it. Mm. And in uh, Sh uh, Shrikhanda, there's a banyan tree under which Vrindavan Das Thakur composed Chaitanya Bhagavat. So both those transcendental literatures composed in the same village. Mm, interesting. Then they eventually, initially, not eventually, initially got the same name. Because yeah. Mangala means auspicious. Mm -hmm. The word Mangala means auspicious. Thank you. Nice point. Anyone else? Uh, yes, uh, um, Uddhava Mitra. Okay, where's our runner here? He's spinning fast and when he dances, but he runs slow. <laughs> Did you see him dancing last night? My God. We could have put that on, you know, like Technicolor and put it all over YouTube, <laughs> Facebook, you know, Twitter. You know. He was spinning so fast, I was getting dizzy watching him. <laughs> that was great. I mean, I was thinking, I get, I'll, I'll get up and spin, but I thought I'll look like a fool compared to him, so I decided to stay, sit down, and I just sat down and decided to watch. <laughs> and he didn't fall either. <laughs> In the way, how, anybody can spin that fast and not fall. They, they must. They must have had something in their last life. You must have been playing with tops when you were kids. <laughs> you don't know what tops are. Oh, okay. You, you get you see, this little thing. It's a. It's like it's a cylinder, and it's got a thing, and it's got a little thing. And you take a string and you throw it, and it spins. And yeah, yeah, like that. Well, I was well. I'm just appreciating your your dancing. So it was really wonderful. Thank you. And then I saw who else was dancing last night. I never saw him dance before. When he was dancing like a little kid, uh, that was uh, Kripa Maya Govinda. Uh, he was bouncing all around. And he had a, the biggest smile on his face. He was like lighting up the whole room. I think he was looking at you while he was dancing. <laughs> it was all by the mercy of Lalit Govinda. Because it was his turn to chant, and he, he came up to me and looks at me in his very, you know, determined look. Okay. <laughs> uh, I surrender. <laughs> I couldn't see. So I got up there and sang, and then I just turned it over to Nimai, and Nimai just took it off. And it was when Nimai was singing that you were spinning. <laughs> Nimai really caught on fire at the end. Oh, he was really good. He was really good. That was a nice gear time, whoever was here really was really powerful last night. Uh, okay, anything else? Oh yeah, me too, yeah. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, I wonder about Kirtan, you know, the, the way uh, Prabhus are dancing, like, is this, like, where this come from? This come, like, from Mahaprabhu, they dance the same, and who introduced them? Because Prabhupada, he was not dancing that much. And the oh, spinning, you mean? Not spinning, just the way Prabhu are dancing in Kirtan. The way we dance? Yes. Yeah, it's outlawed. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, you know, when something gets to red alert, then it's restricted, yeah, so. <laughs> no, we, we don't dance. For, you know. Some of us that get lucky and do something right, but... <laughs> You know, we do the twist, you know, and, and the boogaloo. There was one guy last night, I don't know who he was, he was a devotee. He was, he was doing the boogaloo the whole night. He kept just, 
he was dancing next to you, right? He was like absorbed for like two hours, just bouncing in one place. It was like boogaloo. Him, jump, oh. and he's jumping up and down, and I'm thinking, how do we describe that? I can't, I can't. Marco, you saw him, right? Yeah, and then he, I don't know, I, you'd have to see it, you can't describe it, it's not possible. <laughs> but he didn't see anybody. <laughs> he was so absorbed in the dancing that it, I could see that if nobody was there, it didn't matter, because for him, nobody was there. <laughs> he was just bouncing all over the place. And he was doing some moves that, if I tried to do it, I'd break my leg. <laughs> but in Chicago, when Prabhupada was there, and the devotees danced into a kind of like a boogaloo twist type of expression in the dance, Prabhupada stopped it. He said, dance with your arms up like this. This is, this is how Mahaprabhu danced. He said, this is the way we should dance like that. The Prabhupada, you know, was a little strict. But he says sometimes if you get ecstatic, you know, <laughs> these things happen. <laughs> I wrote an article about dancing. Um, it's about how to approach the whole process of dancing. And, I mean, it's like dancing for anything we do is is, supposed to, is done as an expression of devotion to the Lord in order to please the Lord. It's not just like, you know, Try your new dance step. <laughs> well, Lord Chaitanya did that. He had so many new dance steps that it's mentioned in one prayer that he was always doing some new dance. Yeah, that one prayer. Sachi, what is it? Uh, Sachi Sutastaka. In the first prayer of Sachi Sutastaka, it's called that Lord Chaitanya is always doing novel dances. Novel means new new dances, so Lord Chaitanya would always be doing. But that's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and he's, he's dancing in ecstasy. We get ecstasy not by dancing, but by taking prasadam. <laughs> but that's good, that's ecstasy too. <laughs> but I, I was watching, the ladies were dancing really nice last night. They danced in a line. The ladies dance, you know, like really like, like Gandharvinis. <laughs> they dance so nice. The men dance like if you take a potato, you take a potato and you push it. <laughs> you don't know which way it's going to go. That's how. That's how usually how the men dance. <laughs> The ladies were just like, they had their arms up and they were moving all together and it was so really, I don't like to watch too much, but I couldn't help. <laughs> they were dancing very nice. And the men, I was thinking, hmm, there's no hope for us. <laughs> Do the funky chicken, yeah. <laughs> Krishna consciousness goes in different directions. <laughs> yeah, so you, your 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 <laughs> your inquiry is 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 well taken. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You put everything back in the right perspective. <laughs> but you were dancing too. I was watching you dance. I was thinking, how does he dance like that? <laughs> He's so big that if he fall, if he bends to one side or another, he'll fall over. 
I saw I saw you dancing like never before last night. You were really dancing, right? It was like, did you see him? It was like, wow, he was like, and it was like this circle dance, and all the men are all dancing in the circle, but everybody's doing something different. <laughs> I'm unique. <laughs> The ladies, they can go together. The men think, oh, why should I follow another guy? I've got to do my own, <laughs> do my own thing. <laughs> the male ego, right? <laughs> yeah, but dancing is, is our life, you know. <laughs> what is it? Janava is, is it, what is it? What, how does it go? <clears throat> uh, Italiano? Santari, Tassari, Mangiare. What's the first one? Santari? Cantari, Tassari. Tansari. Tansari. Cantari. Tatsari Manjari. Ooh. Speaking of Manjari, it's breakfast time. <laughs> okay. All right. Chanting, dancing, and munch munching. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Ariba Darchi. Srila <laughs> Prabhupada Ki. Hare Krishna, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki, Lauchandasta Kaur ki, Jai.